Hey YouTube, it's me Black Hat, back again for yet another deck profile video for you today. And today, I'll be reviewing one of my new favorite decks, the Lair of Darkness structure deck. Um, this is the Fang of Critias engine, and um, yeah, I'll be explaining like how this deck works and how it's supposed to function. And uh, oh, and just uh, as just to throw it out there, I'm pretty sorry for being kind of absent lately. I've just been busy with finals and all that stuff. Literally on my last week of college for the semester, so... Well, anyway, let's not waste too much time and let's get right to it. Alright, so starting things off, we got Triple, Darkest Diabolus, Lord of the Lair. Really uh, badass looking guy. Uh, 3000 attack, cannot be targeted by card effects and cannot be attributed by my opponent, so my opponent cannot kaiju this monster. Like, he's anti-kaiju and plus, like, if I'm, a, uh, uh, sorry. if I'm up against a mirror match... He can't do anything to it, even if he has Lair of Darkness as well, so... Really excellent card. And he's pretty easy to bring out. All you have to do is, like, essentially, um... Form a Tribute Effect. And, um, you basically get to summon him from your hand or your graveyard. Pretty much for free. It's really not... Like, it's really not that hard to bring him out at all. Uh, next up we got... Triple Lil... Uh, Lady of the Lament. Or Lady of Lament, I'm sorry. A uh, really excellent card. Is she's actually like really cool. Kind of reminds me of a character from Tokyo Ghoul, actually, just because she has that one red eye. But anyway, moving on. Um, so basically, uh, she's a level three fiend type monster with 2,000 attack. But if she's normal summoned, her attack becomes a thousand, so you can use her for crush card material. But anyway, um, her ability is a quick effect, which uh, lets you tribute off one dark monster, and you get to reveal one, uh, three normal traps. They don't have to be a different name. So she's basically pantheism of the monarchs. Um, your opponent has to choose one of those by random, and you could set that card directly to the field. And of course, the rest go back to your deck. Uh, and what's good about this is that you can also, uh, if you have Lair of Darkness currently present on the field, you can attribute off one of your opponent's monsters instead, and note that she does not target. So that means like, and I've actually beaten a lot of Spiral players this way too, because they had nothing out, there's no out to this. Um, I could attribute off Borlo Dragon, I could attribute off Spiral Sleeper, even if he's equipped, because... Again, the ability does not target, and it does not destroy. So it's like, it's really hard to get around Lilith. Now, of course, you can also attribute herself for cost, if, especially if you're going first or something. And it's a good way, you know, just to set up your board. Because this is a pretty trap and spell-heavy deck, just letting y'all know this now. But overall, it's like, uh, she's a, she's a, she's a must-have to have uh, if you're going to be playing Lair of Darkness. Next up, we got Triple, Arima, the Wicked Warden. Um, he's basically the terraforming of this deck. You can discard him from your um, hand, and then you could to add one Lair of Darkness from your deck to your hand, or you can do this instead if you already have it in your hand. You can tribute one Dark Monster, himself including, or you can use him, doesn't matter, uh, draw one card, or if you tribute off a Dark Monster other than this card, you get to uh, add one Dark Monster with 2,000 or more defense from your deck to your hand. So this is a good way to bring out Darkest Diabolus a lot faster, because... Uh, Apparently, I didn't know this, but when you use this ability, if you search him out, you instantly get to trigger off um, Darkest Diabolus' effect to basically special summon him. So he's really, really busted for that reason. Alright, next up we got Double, Armageddon Knight. Uh, pretty standard uh, for this deck, mainly because you want to send a Dark Monster from your deck to your hand. Or, not from your deck to your hand, from your deck to your graveyard. Uh, disregard that. Uh... And it's just like an extra Foolish Burial, because, you know, Foolish Burial's at one, and this guy um, is basically your second and third Foolish Burial. So it's like, he's really good to have. It's a good way to send um, Supreme King Dark Worm or um, Distrudo, because you need to get those as quickly as into the graveyard as possible as well. And again, you can also do Darkest Diabolus later on. But anyway, moving on, we got Duke Shade, uh, the, Sin the Sinister Shadow. Um, he's pretty good. Um, I only keep him at one though, because he is, he does tend to be a little too slow. But generally, his effect is that you contribute any number of dark monsters, and you can special summon this card directly from your hand, and it gains 500 attack for each monster that was tributed this way. And if this card is normal or special summon, you can target one level five or higher dark monster in your graveyard, add it back to your hand. So again, it's another good way to recycle your um, your darkest diabolus, because you don't want him, you don't want your opponent to accident to uh, end up monster reborning. Darkest Diabolus, otherwise you're pretty much screwed from that. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's basically what this guy's good for. So, yeah, he's not too bad. Uh, next up, we have this card, which is pretty excellent for the deck. Uh, Blackwing Steam to Cloak. Level 3 tuner. Um, I know what some people say, like, what's the point of this guy? He's, he's Blackwing. You're not playing Blackwings with us. Well, I'll explain to you. Um, when this card leaves the field, 
from your field to the grave. Kind of like, a, think of him like Witch of the Black Forest for this deck. But um, you basically produce a Sting Token, which is a Aqua type wind attribute level 1 monster with 100 attack and defense. But with Lair of Darkness, it becomes a dark type. So you can use, um, you're basically giving yourself a free token, essentially. And of course, tokens can be used for synchro material. Now, this guy, however, if he's in your graveyard, you get to, um, if I recall, let's see here. Uh, you contribute one monster, special summon this card from the grave. Uh, you can only use this card once per duel. Okay, so generally you could also contribute off the same token if you wanted to, or you could contribute off a different monster just to kind of like move around, flex around your um, ability to synchro summon with certain levels, you know? Because like there's a lot you can flex with level one monsters. So like that plus this and maybe another level four monster, you instantly get Beals out directly to the field. So this guy's just really good. Now the token effect is not once per duel, just keep that in mind but the tributing effect where you can revive yourself from the grave is so be careful on how to properly use this card all right next up we got of course i mentioned supreme king dragon dark room he's just in here because he's a free summon once he's in your graveyard um as long as you control no monsters you can special summon him directly to the field so he's pretty good for like um link material you know again just you know like the whole point of this deck is to uh I should I should probably mention this now. This is a defensive base deck, and it's it's meant to defend and counterattack. That's basically how this deck functions, and honestly, it, it it's worked out quite a bit. You know, it's like it's a really excellent uh, build. That's just how I like to have it. But anyway, uh, next up we got Distrudo. Um, by now everyone should already know what this guy does. But if he's in your graveyard or in your hand, you get to pay half your life points, then target one level six or lower monster you control, special summon uh, this card, and then if you do. This card's level um, re is reduced by the level of the targeted monster. So, like, you could definitely flex him out as a tuner as well. Like, um, it says level 6 or lower, so if I did have a 6, which I don't, he'd be a level 1. But anything else, it'd be, like, uh, he he'd, he'd be easy to flex around his, um, his level as well to bring out, like, Beals or any of my other synchro monsters for later. And he's also good because he's got, you know, 3,000 defense. So, hey, why not? All right. Uh, next up, we got Tour Guide. Um, when she's normal summon, you could special summon one level three fiend type monster from your deck, but it has its effects negated, and it cannot be used for synchro material. But that's kind of fine because you can also use this for Xyz or Link material. You know, there there are ways you can work with um, Tour Guide, but you mainly use Tour Guide to bring out this guy because um, usually Scar and Scarm is the last monster. By the way, Scarm. Uh, what he does is that um, if he's summoned in all, or rather any other monster you control that is not Burning Abyss, he pops himself. But I mainly use him for his graveyard effect. So if I summon him through the effect of Tour Guide, his field effect so will be negated, so it means he will not be destroyed. But when you send him off to the graveyard, again, when you perform a Link Summon, um, his end phase effect goes is that once he's in your graveyard, you get to add one level three or lower. Or, I'm sorry, just one level three Fiend type monster, not lower. From your deck to your hand. So it's a good way to search out Lilith as well if you really need her, you know? It's a pretty good combo. It's what I usually like to pull off with these two most of the time. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our spells. Uh, next up, we got Triple, Lair of Darkness. Um, this card is basically Zombie World, but the only key difference with it is that it turns all monsters into dark attributes rather than zombies. And also, whenever you perform an effect that requires a tribute, um, you can tribute off one of your opponent's monsters instead. And also, uh, at the end phase, whenever whenever you uh, tri you produce uh, any number of dark tokens, or I believe they're called torment tokens, which are these things, by the way, um, this right here, um, you get to produce any number of these based on however many monsters that were tribute off uh, in one turn. So, like, if it were my turn, and let's say I tribute off three monsters during my own turn, I get to produce three torment tokens if it's my opponent's turn and i perform any effects that require tributes um he gets the tokens you know but again it's at end phase so you can't really be using these for link materials and which is works in your favor again because lilith tributes off dark monsters so you can tribute those off too and and you basically keep your opponent from ever keeping those so that's kind of the whole point of the token system with this deck so anyway moving on and as i mentioned this is the fang of critius engine so you're going to be playing triple Fang of Critius. Mainly because every trap card that you search out that uh, you use for material uh, for one of the Critius Fusion monsters is searchable. So like Mirror Force, you know, search out Mirror Force, get your opponent to play, uh, 
pick and sit it. And of course, you can't activate it on the same turn, but you can uh, at least, if you have Finger Critics in your hand, you can instantly fuse it together because it's on the field, technically speaking. So, like, you make a free Mirror Force Dragon. It's pretty quick and simple. Um, you can also do the same thing with the Crush card, the Ring of Destruction to bring out your Destruction and Doom Virus Dragon. So, it's, it's really good. So, definitely, uh, definitely play that at three. Moving on, we have Triple Allure Darkness. You get to draw two cards at the cost of banishing one Dark Monster. So it's like, it's really essential because the whole deck is dark. So you need as much draw power as you can to get all the cards you need for later. And so yeah, three is definitely essential. Can't say any more than that. All right, next up we got Double Terraforming, which by the way, um, I'm going to say this now. I actually recommend playing Metaverse more than Terraforming. I haven't had, I don't have a Metaverse, so that's why I'm playing Terraforming for right now. But once I get my hands on at least two t Metaverses... Um, I'll definitely be playing that more than Terraforming because the deck's weakness is that um, if Lair of Darkness leaves the field, then you're you're basically vulnerable. You need to keep Lair of Darkness out on the field as much as you can. So if, let's say if I had Lair of Darkness and a Metaverse set, but my opponent decides to say, uh, I don't know, Cosmic Cyclone, my Lair of Darkness, it's gone. I can't trip it off his monsters anymore. But what Metaverse lets you do is um, you get to, like Terraforming, you get to add one field spell from your deck to your hand, but Metaverse has another effect. You can also, if as long as your field zone is spell zone is empty, you can instantly activate any field spell from your deck directly to the field. That's why I think that's a little bit better. But again, terraforming is still pretty good. It's uh, it's just a for now thing, you know. Uh, Metaverse will definitely be a much better uh, card for Lair of Darkness than this, but got to work with what you got, right? But anyway, moving on, we got Monster Gate, pretty good card. And again, if you have Lair of Darkness, trip it off one of your opponent's monsters, and you can excavate the top card of your deck until you excavate a monster that can be normal summon or set and then you special summon it all other cards go to the graveyard so it's basically reasoning and you know like and of course i do side off reasoning just in case if uh if i have to but in general monster gate's gonna be your better choice now this card's hilarious to play with lara darkness enemy controller because you essentially treat it off one of your opponent's monsters with lara darkness to take control of one of their monsters. So instead of tri uh, tributing off one of your own, your opponent is going to be less is going to be short on two monsters for that turn. And of course, if you take control of it, um, you summon out Lilith. You can tribute off that monster. You know, like it's a good way to get rid of problematic monsters. Now it's like enemy controller is now relevant for this deck. It's like honestly, like before enemy controller was just a good way to force your opponent's monsters to go into defense mode. With, but with link monsters, they don't have a defense mode. So what do you do? Take control of it and try to get rid of it as quickly as you can. So hey. This is a good way to get rid of boar loads too. Even firewall dragons like uh, has no out to this card, so it's like really excellent. Next up, we got one foolish burial. Can't say any more than this. This is that you just send one monster from your deck to the graveyard. It could be darkest diabolos, can be D Distrito, dark room, anything you know, whatever you want. Uh, we got monster reborn. You know, it's a good staple to have. You know, every card, every deck needs a monster reborn now and then. Any course, you can also target one of your opponent's monsters and use it against them. So, hey, why not? Next up, we got Triple Mirror Force. I always like to pull this off a lot with my opponent since, again, Lilith is basically pantheism. So, pick out three Mirror Forces, especially if I have Fang of Critias ready in my hand. And, uh, and my opponent doesn't really get a choice, so I get to instantly bring out a free Mirror Force Dragon. And if he targets anything on the field, um, it's an instant board wipe if I have Mirror Force Dragon out, so. Hey, Mirror Force is always good to have. Next up, we got Double Crush Card. Just to bring out um, Doom Virus Dragon a little bit faster. Because um, the only weakness to Crush Card by itself is the fact that um, your opponent doesn't take any damage on the turn you... Or until the end of the next turn on when you activated this card, so. But Doom Virus Dragon does not, and his effect lingers, too, so. Um, definitely bring out Doom Virus Dragon more than... And using crush card itself uh, next up we got back to the front play it at two you know you really don't need too much revival with this deck to be honest with you so i thought back to the front was a pretty good uh, way to search it out with lilith and it's pretty good you know just in case if you need to bring back lilith so yeah definitely use it you know it's like it's just really good um because uh, even though your monster has to be in defense mode, again, Lilith is, a, is probably the be your better choice on this one. That way you could reuse her effect, tribute off, and then get some new trap cards set and ready to go. Alright, next up we got one Eradicator. 
kind of want to, it's pretty good against true Dracos and pen magicians. So you call spells, they can't use spells, or if you call traps, they can't use traps for three turns, you know? It's a good, but of course, uh, it's limited. So if it was at three, you know, I'd be playing that a lot more than Crush Card, but unfortunately, it's at one for a reason. And lastly, we got one Ring of Destruction. Like, like, like I mentioned before, it's searchable through Lilith because it is a normal trap. And um, you mainly, you don't actually use it for for its effect. You mainly just use it to fuse it with Frangocritius to make your Destruction Dragon because Destruction Dragon is a 3k uh, brick wall. So he's really good to defend yourself with. And yeah, that's all I can really say about it. All right, let's move on to our um, extra deck. Um, since, like I mentioned, this is Fangocritius, so naturally you gotta play Fangocritius Fusion Monsters. So I'll start off with two Doom Virus Dragons. Has the effect of Crush Card where you destroy all monsters with 1500 attack or more on your opponent's uh, field and in his hand. And for the next three turns, any monster, I get to look at my opponent's hand, and any monsters he drew into with 1500 or more attack get destroyed for that turn. So, yeah, it's a good way to slow him down, you know, get rid of problematic monsters. Just be aware of, um, Destruction effects though you never want to trigger those off a little too often because that could actually turn against you Next up we got mirror force dragon as I mentioned, you know whenever your opponent targets a card um, You control it's an instant board wipe on his side of the field oh, Excuse me, and what's great about this guy is that his ability is not once per turn So that means he your opponent has to use a non-targeting move to get rid of this guy because again anything that targets pfft, Everything's gone on his side of the field. It's an instant board wipe. There's no way for him to get out of it. Next up, we got Destruction Dragon. Um, once per turn, you can target one card your opponent controls, and it can be one card. It doesn't have to be a monster. You can destroy it. And if it's a monster, your opponent takes damage equal to that monster's original attack strength. So it's really good to, you know, as long as it's a monster that can be destroyed by card effects, and as long as it doesn't have, like, um, a restriction where he can't be targeted, this guy's really good for that purpose. So, and again, three thousand defense is really excellent too. So it's a good way to, because again, the whole point of this deck is to defend yourself and then go into the attack after. You don't want to like recklessly attack too many times, otherwise you're pretty much just gonna screw yourself over. All right, moving on to our synchros, we got Black Rose Dragon, um, another uh, nuke to the board, and it it has come in handy quite a few times, a lot. So it's like. It's just really good. Next, we got Beals. Not too hard to bring out. It's like, he's actually fairly easy to bring out. But he cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And if I take battle damage from this guy, um, he gains attack points based on the damage I took. So, also an excellent card. And then we decided to add this guy in because he's also really easy to bring out. But we got Draco Kytus, the uh, corrupted um, Nether Dragon, I believe, or Nether Soul Dragon. So what this guy does is that he cannot be destroyed by battle, and when he destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, um, I can activate this effect. He can attack twice on my opponent's monsters in a row, and during the standby phase, I can target one face-up monster my opponent controls, its attack becomes half of its original attack, or of its current attack, I'm sorry, and my opponent takes damage equal to that attack points that my opponent took, so he's actually really excellent. All right, we got uh, two XC's monsters for right now. Um, I'm actually gonna be switching one of these out for um, for something else, but the one I'm definitely keeping is number 41, Baguska. Keep him in defense mode, he's essentially skill drain. Uh, just be aware that his um, detaching effect at the standby phase does count as an activated effect, so he's vulnerable to ghost ogre, so just kind of be on the alert for that. And I have Evil Swarm Ouroboros, which has uh, three different effects. Um, but I usually, again, I'm planning on switching him out with something else. I think I already figured out what. But I just like the fact that his attack is pretty good. But uh, once per turn, I get to detach one Xyz material and activate one of these effects. I can either target one card my opponent controls or return to the hand. Send one random card from my opponent's hand to the graveyard. Or I can target one card in my opponent's graveyard and banish it. So it's a good way like, to keep my opponent from recycling certain effects or anything like that. So Evil Swarm or Boros is actually not too bad. But I'm trying to debate which one I really want to, whether I want to keep them or, or switch them out. I, but if I am switching them out, I'll probably switch them out with a, a best dweller or something. But again, still kind of thinking that through. But anyway, let's not waste too much time. Let's go on to the uh, Link Monsters. And I got quite a few of them. But uh, we got, um, let's see, ah, here we go. Link Spider. Because you do produce quite a lot of tokens with this deck. So it's a good way to just bring them out. Use them for Link material for something else. 
and then we got Underclock Taker. Uh, target one monster, one face-up monster. This card points to, and uh, and then one target one face-up monster your opponent controls. That monster loses attack equal to the attack of the monster that I, that this card's pointing to until the end of the turn. So it's a good way to you know weaken your opponent's monsters. Then we got Master King Archery. We don't actually just we don't actually use him for his ability. We just kind of use him because he's uh, pretty simple to bring out, and I just need him for link material for something better. But uh, essentially, like, you have to pay 500 life points once per standby phase. And unfortunately, uh, if you don't, you have to destroy him. But his uh, I, but his other effect, I'm not going to get into it because, again, we never really use it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just not really that great anyway. But next up, we got Deco Tucker, the most standard um, Link monster to have. Link 3 uh, gains 500 attack points for each monster on his Link points. And quick effect, if you're... If a card is to be targeted, you get to destroy one, um, you get to tribute, I'm sorry, one monster this card points to, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that target. Next up, we got Trigate Wizard, which comes with three different effects, depending on where he's co-linked. But, uh, if he's co-linked to one monster, um, this card, uh, whenever this card battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage is inflicted to my opponent is doubled. Um, once per turn, I can target one card on the field banish it and that's only if he's co-linked with two and co-linked at three i get to negate the activation of any um card effect and banish the card so he's really good and finally we got firewall dragon and based on however many uh monsters he's co-linked to um i get to bounce that many number of cards to back to my opponent's uh field or graver back to his hand and also um whenever a monster this card points to is destroyed by battle, I get to special summon one monster from my hand. So he's really, really good. But unfortunately, he's limited because, you know, World Chalice specifically abused his effect. I mean, they really abused his effect. Alright, and lastly for our side deck, we have Triple DD Crow. You know, never hurts to play uh, one type of hand trap, right? So I thought DD Crow was a good match, and since it's a dark type, I figured I wanted to stick to the theme, and it's a good way to get rid of, like, problematic spells that could be or traps that can be recycled. Now this card is really excellent with this deck. I actually tested it out already just to see how it felt, but he's really busted. Um, Vampire Hunter. Now what this guy does is that he destroys any dark monster he encounters in battle. So, And I learned that his ability actually stacks on top of Borload, so my opponent attacked it. His ability actually triggers off first, so he'll automatically destroy Borload Dragon immediately before my opponent even gets a chance to take control of him. But essentially, yeah, um, no dark, he's anti-dark, so like, and with Lair of Darkness, the fact that it turns everything to dark monsters, I could destroy every monster that this guy comes across. It doesn't matter what the attack strength is, it's an automatic destruction effect. We have our third Armageddon Knight. Never hurts, you know, just figured, why not? But yeah, just in case if I have to get rid, like, take off Duke Shade, and I need a higher chance of drawing into Armageddon Knight, I'll switch him out. We got one Dragon Ravine. Um, Dragon Ravine does help a lot with this deck because, again, you want to try to get your stuff into the graveyard as quickly as you possibly can. So he's a good, uh, it's a good card to add in for later if you really need to. But it's not required, you know, you really don't need Dragon Ravine too much, but it never hurts. And as I mentioned, Reasoning, your opponent calls a level. And you get to Excavate, and of course he calls it wrong, you get to Special Summon that monster. We have, um, oops, sorry, I dropped a card here. Double full force fires. Uh, really excellent card. Uh, what this does is like you tribute off one dark monster with 2,000 more defense. And I get to check my opponent's hand. All monsters they control and all cards that they draw into until the end of the third turn. With 1,500 or less defense get destroyed. So it's a good way to uh, deal with mirror matches as well. Uh, we got the one grinning gray virus. Um... I do not recommend using this against 60 card decks, but what's good about them is that, or about this is that, you know, your opponent can't activate any uh, card effects that were destroyed by this card's effect on the same turn, so he has to wait till later to activate any effects. So, like, it's a good way to slow down Fairy Tale Snow, but you also gotta be cautious, because again, um, he can use that for later. So, yeah, it's just, like, really good for, like, certain things, but not all. We got our third back to the front. Again, just in case if we actually need it. But, you know, it's like, it's not too often that you do. You really only just need the two that's currently in the main deck. 
And sometimes if I'm up against like pen magicians or anything that's going to be filling this board up with a lot of monsters, triple Torrential Tribute. I don't want to main deck these because, again, it's like the whole point of the deck is just to stun and... Well, I mean, this card, it, I can main deck it. There, It, it is possible for me to, to do that, but um, the reason I'm not main decking right now is because like I hardly encounter pen magicians nowadays. People are starting to give up on the deck, around my locals at least, because so far I've not really seen anyone play pen magicians all too often. I mean, every now and then I do see that occasional Pen Magician deck, but from what I've heard, like, a lot of people are, like, starting to stop playing them because, um, so far it looks like that new ban list just might really kill them, you know? No one really knows that for sure, but it's getting there. We'll find out in a few days or so. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today, so hopefully y'all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch y'all next time.